The total number of undergraduate college students in the U.S. has dropped by almost 10 percent during the pandemic. But it's been a different story for some time at many historically black colleges and universities, or HBCUs, where interest and funding have increased. Applications were up nearly 30 percent at many of these schools between 2018 and 2021. And top-tier HBCUs are increasingly becoming the first choice for some of the country's most sought after students. Yet HBCUs face some fundamental challenges too. Special correspondent Hari Srinivasan has this report. It's the first in our latest series on rethinking college. I turned down Harvard and UC Berkeley. Harvard, Penn, Yale, Duke, USC, Emory, right down the street, um, Vanderbilt, these are all the places sophomores Cadence Patrick and Sakai Parker turned down to come to Spelman College, an all-women's HBCU, or Historically Black College and University in Atlanta. There's no, you have to pass this test to prove that you're good enough, to prove that you're smart enough, because I mean, we've already shown our excellence. In high school, I noticed like if I had a good like academic standing or a success, it was more so like, wow, I didn't know you could do that, rather than this is what's expected of you here. For Parker, on a pre-med track with a health science major, it was her experience at her majority white high school that led her here. I feel like I had the responsibility to represent for the black community, but also speak for other people about their experiences that I have no idea about. It was very exhausting having to represent all the time. Patrick, who's studying computer science, said her parents were split on her decision. Her dad favored Harvard, her mom Spelman. For her, it came down to a sense of belonging. The percent of black students at Ivy's is very, very small. Mm -hmm. And so that can be a daunting statistic to be walking into. There's so few people that look like me who share my experience. I'm going to have to prove myself at every step of the way. HBCUs like Spelman College have seen a surge in interest. In 2014, more than 4,000 people applied. In 2021, that nearly tripled with more than 11,000 applicants. Certificate program for adult learning. Dr. Helene Gale took over as the institution's courses, president this you know, summer. An epidemiologist and a leader in public health, she spent her career in government and nonprofit roles. She views what's happening in the admissions office sure. as a reflection of the rapid social change in the country. This is a generation that grew up with a black president. They've gone through some of the social unrest following the murder of George Floyd and kind of the um, movement around black lives. Young people are choosing to be in a place that nurtures them, that recognizes who they are in the world and really thinks about how they can make this generation of young black people succeed. The increasingly competitive student pool comes as no surprise to Rosalind Gates Brewer, a proud Spelman alumna and the chair of the college's board of trustees. Our talent pools have been very similar to the Yale and Harvard candidates, but Spelman is an absolute deliberate choice. Before becoming the CEO of the Walgreens Boots Alliance last year that operates some 9,000 drugstores across the U.S., she's also held top positions at Starbucks and Sam's Club. About 10 percent of our class is graduating Phi Beta Kappa. Now you wouldn't see 45 to 50 black women graduate Phi Beta Kappa from Harvard or Yale, right? But you get that at Spelman College. We really did Brewer, a first-generation college graduate, is one of only two black females running Fortune 500 companies. There is something that I will tell you that is deep in my gut around um, taking on big challenges. and. I'm, I'm not afraid of those, and I think I gained that at Spelman College. While HBCUs account for just 3% of post-secondary institutions, they educate about 9% of all black college students and produce about 13% of all African-American undergraduate degrees. Historically black colleges were founded with clearly a racial justice initiative mm -hmm. to attend to the ways in which African-Americans could not attend white colleges and universities. Professor Beverly Guy Shiftal has been teaching at Spelman, her alma mater, for more than 50 years. Many of them, for the first time, they have black professors. They also see a black college president, and they hear over and over again that this is a place made for you. More than 60 percent of HBCU students are Pell Grant eligible, and tuitions average about 30 percent lower than predominantly white institutions. 
HBCUs also enroll more first-generation and academically underprepared students than other four-year schools. We punch so well above our weight when we think about what we're able to turn out uh, with less resources than many of our peer uh, majority institutions. But there are still challenges with less financial help from state and federal governments historically and far smaller endowments than other schools. There's been a bias from the very beginning and you can look at state institutions that are predominantly black and state institutions that are white and there's always been a, a huge gap. Um, we don't have adequate housing. We don't always have adequate infrastructure, latest technology. Federal lawmakers have increased funding for HBCUs, providing nearly $2 billion since 2017, as well as an additional $2.7 billion this year in pandemic emergency relief. Alumni and philanthropists have donated more than a billion dollars in recent years, funding scholarships and programs in science, technology, and other fields. But it's still not enough. There have been lawsuits in states that found that their system underfunded their black public colleges. Nandre Njoku heads the United Negro College Fund's Frederick D. Patterson Research Institute here in Atlanta. She co-authored a recent report calling for more funding. We did a survey of our member institutions and we found a majority of them have at least five million dollars in deferred maintenance. We still need those unrestricted funds to take care of the facilities and upgrade our institutions in the ways that we can continue to retain the students who have increased interest in enrollment. Better known HBCUs like Spelman College are not in danger, but other institutions, many of them smaller and in rural areas, have not experienced the same recent surge in interest. About a third of the HBCUs, uh, 30 to 35 of them uh, were in the red zone, financially precarious. They were tuition driven and for an institution to be tuition driven, uh, it's like uh, an individual living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck. John Wilson served as the president of Morehouse College and as a White House advisor on historically black colleges. He's writing a book about HBCUs and says the schools should seize the moment. We've seen it come and go in cycles. If you go back to the 1980s when Ronald Reagan took office, there was a national climate that was more racially hostile. The ideal is for HBCUs to be in charge of their own magnetism, to not be subject to the whims of the marketplace, but to control your own destiny. HBCUs also play a broader role in society, with a history of propelling black students into the middle class. Their social mobility status is transformed. Um, they can go from the bottom quintile to middle class because of the tools and skills that they get at these HBCUs. Spelman is an incubator of black women who go on to STEM careers. Guy Shiftal doesn't see the interest in HBCUs declining. To the extent that the U.S. remains hostile to people who are different, you need special mission institutions. You need ones that are Hispanic serving, you need women's colleges, you need tribal colleges desperately, and you need HBCUs. Despite all the challenges facing this group of schools, for sophomores Cadence Patrick and Sakai Parker, it came down to something very basic. I'm able to, you know, look around and feel like the people around me understand me. It's possible that I can be in a space that is designed specifically for me as a black woman, but I can also feel like a sense of belonging and never have to question that. And that's a powerful reason, they say, that students will increasingly pick HBCUs. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Hari Srinivasan in Atlanta.